Claudia, you had a near-death experience as a young woman. Then, later on, you had still other spiritual experiences. How did the near-death experience come about? I was in my early 30s at the time, and I had a young daughter and was a single parent. My daughter was about three years old back then, but I can't remember the exact point in time. And this situation as a single mother was quite stressful for me, quite exhausting, because such a situation was completely new to me and very different from how I had imagined it to be. But it happened on a weekend when I wasn't feeling well. I had heart pain early in the morning and it kept getting worse. So I went to the emergency service where the doctor on duty told me that it wasn't that bad and that it was probably psychological and that I should rest and just wait and see and that it really was not bad. The emergency room was quite full, so the doctor sent me home. I was lying down on the sofa during the day and went to bed in the evening, still having heart pain. Then at some point in the evening, in the night actually, I woke up and found myself floating in my living room. I don't know how I had come out of my body, I was just floating in the living room. I then looked around and could see that it was about 4 or 4.30 in the morning and it was in summer and since I had white curtains I was able to look through them and even though the light was a bit dim it was okay. At some point I realized without any effort on my part that I was being drawn to the front door of this apartment. Then I found myself floating through my living room like Superman, so to speak, with both arms stretched forward in front of me. The kitchen and living room were one large room, and to the right was my room, and the bathroom and my daughter's room. And through this open door of the living room, I moved toward the main entrance door, floating, flying, and then I was drawn to this door as if by automatic pilot, because that's where I was supposed to move. And when I then floated past my daughter's room, the thought came to my mind, no, you can't go, you can't leave your child alone, you can't do that. And the very moment I thought that, it was as if I felt a rubber band on my back and as if someone was pulling this rubber band, bang, just for a tiny moment. Well, it was just in the twinkling of an eye and thereafter I was back in my bedroom where I was floating above on the ceiling and I saw my sparsely lit bed down there. I used to think at the time that the dim glow was caused by my bedside lamp, but apparently it wasn't. Anyway, I could then see the figure lying in this bed down there. It was a body, and first of all, I didn't know what it was all about, who it was, and so I was floating up there for quite a while, thinking, who could that be down there? And at some point, I figured it out and I just kept floating. So whenever I had understood something more again, I kept floating. Then I began to float downwards, basically positioned in the same way as my body lying in bed. So I was turning accordingly and my ethereal body was floating down to the body lying in the bed until it was at about the same height. And then it just went whoosh. So there was a noise somehow. And then I was back in my body very quickly. Well, I then got up, but the first thing I did was sit down and ask myself, what was that all about? Up to this point in time, I hadn't yet heard of near-death experiences.
but I had heard something about astral travel. And this is something I have to relate here as well, because then thereafter I had some experiences. My uncle, with whom you could actually talk about anything, had been going through cancer and survived it all. He was also very open-minded, and he had told me about astral travel two or three weeks before, how great it would be, and that he would love to do it, but hadn't managed it as yet. So I asked him what it actually is and what had to be done. And he explained to me that you can leave your body and then travel wherever you want. And when he had explained it to me, I thought, wow, that's great. I've got to try this. So I asked him, how can I achieve such a state of being? He then told me, I no longer know the details that first you have to focus on a point on the ceiling and then concentrate on it for quite a while. So you will then detach yourself from your body, so to speak. So the ethereal energy body then detaches itself from the physical body. And the whole thing came, came to my mind again when I was still sitting on the edge of my bed. And because it was indeed so beautiful, this floating, this lightness, the fact that the problems were all gone, as well as the burden that lay on my shoulders, it was all gone. And it was a wonderful feeling, this floating. And that's why I thought to myself, I'll lie down now and try it. I'll try again to see if this can be brought about by myself. So I lay down and on my wardrobe, there was still an old suitcase with the usual suitcase latches. So I focused on one of these suitcase latches, thereby trying to leave my body with both of my arms stretched forward. But it didn't really work. So I was only half outside and half of me was still sitting in my body, whereas my earthly body was still laying on the bed. And the energy body or the ethereal body or whatever you want to call it was half out of the body. And the whole time I was sitting there with my arms stretched forward. I then was looking around and since it all had happened early in the morning, I could see that in the bedroom too, it was already a bit bright. And as I said, I was even able to look behind me. But I only had realized afterwards that this was possible. And afterwards, in hindsight, when thinking about my bedside lamp that I assumed was switched on because of the light I had seen there, I realized that it wasn't my bedside lamp at all. As I went on sitting there, I saw a light on the floor down in the corner. That was slowly floating upwards, higher and higher. And at some point, it stopped. It was, I don't know exactly, but it was about the size of a beach ball. And it was beautiful. So I was looking into this light, asking myself, what is that? It was incredible. It was a kind of bluish, bright light. Wonderful. And it was as if there was light blue plasma inside this light, very concentrated energy, so to speak. And as if inside this energy, inside this ball, little energy worms were scurrying about, little lights all around. So I was looking into this ball for a while and I found it wonderful. And then I heard a male voice in my head telepathically saying, or to put it another way, asking me neutrally, but authoritatively, would you like to leave or do you want to stay? And this voice really scared me because I didn't want to leave. 
I just wanted to see what it was like. And so I got a fright when hearing this voice and I wanted to get back into my body. And that's why I let myself fall back. But it felt like there was someone lying behind me. And indeed, there was someone lying there. It was my body, of course, but I couldn't get into my body, even though I tried to move backwards. But in doing so, I felt a resistance. So I panicked. I moved my head all the way forward to my knees, making a wide sweeping movement, and then letting myself fall back into my body with all my strength. And with this second attempt, I succeeded. So when I was then back in my body, I felt a strong cracking in my ears. And this was really a kind of little bang in my ears. And then I was back in my body. Claudia, before this experience, you had an exceptional dream related to your first child. At the time, I was living with a friend in the south of France, and once again, I found out that I was pregnant. I was still relatively young at the time, and at first, I couldn't deal with it all. So I was deeply impressed that now I was pregnant. Well, I knew the medical services in France, but all I really wanted to do was go home to my parents in Germany. Moreover, I was in dispute with the father of the child of my daughter, so I wasn't feeling well at all. So I really wanted to pack my bags and go home. And that's what I did. I went home. At that time, I was driving a white Mercedes. I don't know if this had anything to do with my dream. At least that's how it was. Anyway, I had this old white Mercedes a really great car that I had already packed the evening before. And I also had my bike with me. I wanted to take everything along with me. I had also told my parents that I intended to come home and that I was pregnant. And they said to me, come home. It's no problem. You can stay with us and then we'll see. Well, the night before I left, I had a dream in which I was sitting on the back of a white horse that really looked peaceful. It was snorting and had very long hair, like horses in fairy tales have. So I was sitting on the back of this horse, and there was a little girl standing in front of this horse. And in retrospect, I knew it was my daughter. And this little girl had curls and really big eyes. And she stretched out her hand to me. She was looking up to me and stretching out her hands. And when I looked down, we were looking at each other for a while. So I took this little girl's hand, put the girl behind me on the horse's back, and somehow she was able to hold on and then we rode off slowly. And in front of me, the only thing I saw was a forest. And it was a dense fog in this forest. And somehow I saw both of us riding into this foggy forest. And then at some point we disappeared. Well, this is now the dream I had. And at some point I arrived home and bought all the baby clothes in pink, because now it was clear to me that I was carrying a girl. And if it had been a boy, well, too bad, he would have had to cope with the color pink until he grew out of those clothes. <laughs> it was really amazing. In this dream, my daughter was about one and a half years old, so she was already able to stand up and she still had her little curls and her big eyes. It was great. It wasn't a dream in the true sense of the word. And actually, I don't know what I should call it. Later on, you also experienced an after-death contact, and you had still further spiritual experiences. Can you tell me about them? That's right. 
It happened when my daughter was seven and when I was pregnant again, although unfortunately I had also separated from the father of this baby. Well, the whole pregnancy was rather, was relatively difficult because I had to move house on my own. I already had been to hospital a few times before, and the doctor had told me that the child could not be born by the usual procedure and that a cesarean was recommended. I then chose a date, October 2nd, and the doctor said that, that, that this date was quite appropriate also because October 3rd is a public holiday and that every year my child's birthday party would coincide with this holiday. Well, I then went to the hospital and asked for an epidural because that way it's only the abdomen that's being anesthetized so that I could experience the birth. That's how we had planned it. Later on, I was finally lying in the operating room well, initially just in the anteroom of the operating room where I got the injection. As far as I know, there are two channels in the spine. One channel goes up and the other goes down. And a test is done beforehand because as the person administering the anesthesia had explained to me, the fluid can sometimes rise upward in the spine and paralysis of the upper body could then occur. And that's what happened to me. So now I was laying there, having got the injection and realizing the paralysis was not in my lower body, but my upper body. And this means I could no longer breathe. However, since this was just only a test, it wasn't that dangerous but still dramatic enough for me because I suddenly couldn't breathe. Whereupon I saw everyone starting to rush around. I was immediately given an oxygen mask. And as far as I remember, I was administered an injection with something. Then the door flew open and the doctor who was supposed to operate on me came rushing in shouting, general anesthetic immediately and move to the operating room. We have to get the child straight away. And this, of course, was dramatic for me. But in the end, the operation went very well and my son was born. But it was difficult for me to recover from the anesthesia. It all was a bit difficult due to the fact that I had had a double dose of anesthesia. But at some point, my son was brought to me and I was blissfully happy because in view of such happiness, it was all forgotten. Thereafter, I was still in hospital for a few days. My brother picked me up from the hospital because I could not drive myself. So he picked me up and brought me home where my mother and my daughter were waiting for me. And we spent the afternoon together and then my brother drove away again sometime in the evening and my mother and my daughter were sitting in the living room. Meanwhile, it was evening and it was quiet. I was in the bedroom changing my son's diaper and I was completely absorbed in what I was doing. Next to me, there was a door opening onto a corridor. And even though I was completely absorbed in looking after my son, I felt like I was being watched. So I saw my grandmother standing next to me. I just happened to look up for a very brief moment when I saw her. And when I looked further down this dark corridor, she was suddenly gone. I couldn't help but laugh a little because I thought, how can this be possible after all? But still, it made me curious. She had died about a year before, and I had a really great relationship with my grandmother. We had a lot in common, and I think she probably wanted to see her grandchild. So she came for a visit, you might say, and she looked exactly the same as she used to look in life. She was wearing the sweater 
She loved to wear and also wearing a white blouse, dark trousers, her shoes, just as normal as usual. But it was really only a very brief moment that I saw her. You had still another experience. Yes, when my daughter was born, I was living with my parents, where I had extended a small apartment, but still, I didn't stay there for a long period of time because there was a lot of tension. I think there were too many of us in one house and I had a small room there where I was sleeping together with my little daughter. And this situation was becoming difficult. So from the beginning, I really went through an inner conflict because I am a freedom loving person. I've traveled a lot and lived in different countries. So keeping my feet still, that is staying in one place, taking care of my daughter and managing all this was a bit difficult for me at the beginning. I didn't know where the journey was going, how it was all going to be, how I was going to manage all this on my own. Thoughts like this were crossing my mind. On one occasion in the night, I woke up because I could clearly feel someone sitting on my bed. I clearly felt the edge of the bed stretching downwards, and I was startled so much that I sat upright in bed thinking, oh my dear, what's going on here? However, I realized that I didn't need to be afraid. So I lay down again, whereupon I heard a voice in my head say to me, you don't need to be afraid. Everything will be just fine. There was only this sentence. So thereafter, I somehow fell asleep again, but I have not forgotten the sentence, nor did I forget this experience. It has been with me all through these years. Oh dear, I think I'm almost about to cry. Throughout the years, it has helped me again and again, because whenever I was feeling down, I thought about it. And it came to my mind afterwards that the voice I heard there was the same voice I had heard from the light during the near death experience. I think it was the same voice. I don't remember exactly, but I do think so. There was yet another experience I had after the near death experience, actually shortly after it. I have to say in this respect that I have a friend who is very religious. And because I have told her that I sometimes get frightened, she once gave me the following advice. Listen, if ever you are scared, then you should pray to Jesus Christ with, how shall I put it, with full fervor. He is the one who will come and help you. In this first moment, I thought about this. And now, as before, I am not an especially religious person, so I do not belong to any religion. But of course, I believe in God or in something superior, in a superior power. But at that point in time, I just thought, well, okay, I'll give it a try while nodding kindly. And I said, yes, I'll do that when I get scared. One day then I was lying in my bed and feeling a terrible fear. I felt there was something around me that was scaring me terribly. So I thought, well, now the moment has come. Now I must pray. So I really folded my hands and with all my strength, I prayed to Jesus Christ. Thereby looking up at the ceiling where I saw a shining figure appear. This figure then suddenly was spreading out its arms. But there was not a body to be seen. Only the head and the arms were visible. 
It was a shining figure with head and arms, but no body. And this apparition then spread out its arms, which looked like real wings, and it raised its arms upwards. And then I heard a great sound like whoosh above me, and it kept going on that way several times. And then I saw something dark up on the right-hand ceiling, wafting around up there, something like a cloud. And this dark cloud was vanishing more and more at every moment when this whoosh sound was to be heard. So the dark cloud kept shrinking whenever the light figure spread its arms upwards until it had completely disappeared. Maybe the light figure was an angel. I don't know. When thinking back now, what impact did all these experiences have on your worldview? I think that over time, I have withdrawn more and more from society. So I really like being alone. And that's because I, I have realized that it is very stressful for me when I am together with a lot of people, because then I feel, well, I don't know exactly whether this has come about because of the near death experience or whether it was like that before. I can't say for sure. All I can say is that sometimes I am able to empathize with people to the point where I feel whether they are doing well or not. So sometimes I just simply don't have a barrier and therefore it is sometimes very tiring when I'm with lots of people. I really like living alone. I'm living here in France now and I'm actually quite happy. It's nice to be with people again from time to time, of course, but it's not that I'm a hermit either. Well, that's one aftermath of it, having withdrawn more and more. A further impact is that I no longer eat meat, no longer wear makeup, I do not belong to any religion, I no longer drink alcohol, and I no longer smoke. I just want to be a good person, and I'm actually on a journey, on the path to find myself, basically only ever acting intuitively, and no longer allowing society to manipulate me. So I am more or less outside of society it's too stressful for me. I don't watch TV with all its negative programs. And I know that we will all leave our body at some point. The body will then decay. It will become earth again or whatever. And we, our consciousness, will be living on. So we are immortal. And this is a nice feeling. Would you tell me if it is this experience which has to some extent opened the gate to the spiritual for you? Definitely. So I think that if I hadn't had the near-death experience, I would always have had my doubts. So if people had told me something like that, I'm not sure I would have believed them. But because I had this near-death experience myself, even though it was relatively short, but I did see a light, although not like other people. The great, beautiful light, I didn't go through a tunnel either. But even this brief insight really gave me, shall I say, it was the igniting spark to look into spirituality and to keep studying it. Claudia, thank you very much for this wonderful interview.